So this is what my final list looks like. I have only added the apps that I personally use myself. So these are the five categories. Niche is for the apps that have a specific use case and also have a very niche fan base. Reliable is for the apps that simply gets your job done. Superb. These are some of the most powerful apps, but they can be a little bit overwhelming for new users since it's in the middle level. Excellent. These are some of the amazing apps that you can use to change your life, but they missed out the code status for some reason or the other. And finally, quote. Greatest of all time. Let's see which app makes it over here. In case you think I missed out your favorite app, then it was intentional. It's most likely because I don't use that app. My name is Prithviraj and I create videos on productivity, tech and life. So firstly, let us begin with Microsoft To Do. So let us first decide where do we place this one. I'm gonna keep this at excellent. Also, I'll be ranking them based on my preferences. So you might agree, you might not agree. It's totally fine. The most important part, it's a completely free to do list app. You can manage your projects in this app as well as create separate lists. And since this is a Microsoft product, the integration with the MS Office is super smooth, I must say. Like for your office work, if you have to work on MS Teams, then this can actually be a good option because it will just sync seamlessly. So the reason I have placed this at excellent is that it offers everything you need to manage your to do list. And none of the features of this app is behind a pay Wall. There are many apps here on this list who actually charge you for setting reminders, but everything is free over here. So this is by far an excellent choice if you just want a to-do list app that you can use on every single of your device. It's there for Android, iOS, Mac, and of course Windows, and it syncs between all of them quite nicely. It lacks some advanced features like for example, if you wanted some calendar access and stuff, that's not there. You have to use some other thing. You can schedule tasks based on dates, but it's not the same as having a fully fledged calendar view inside. And speaking of to-do list, the app that I use always is to do this so let me place this at gold but actually I can't. I'll have to again place this at excellent. This is the to-do list app that I use every single day in my life. Like after I'm done filming this video, I'll check it off from Todoist itself. Todoist is a very clean and a very powerful to-do list app. And the best of all, it supports simple language. So I can simply add a task like this, like write the script every Tuesday and Thursday at 5 p.m. and it will create a time-centric task. So this makes creating tasks really easy in a very simple way. But the thing about Todoist is that many of the basic features are behind the paywall as well. Like if we get the premium version of Todoist, we get the calendar view. And I can totally understand why they might want to put that behind a paywall. Reminders. This is a basic thing you need in a to-do list app. But the thing is that if you want to do is to give you reminders, you will have to get the paid version. And that's kind of sad. That is the reason I'll be placing this ad excellent. Other than that, it's very easy to do project management over here. You have those Kanban board view as well in case you prefer that. And it's also cross-platform. It's there everywhere. And I really love the desktop version of this app. It's very powerful. But it lacks some of the basic features behind the paywall. So I'll be placing this ad excellent. Speaking of project management, I recently discovered this project management app called ClickUp and I must say they offer a generous amount of features for free and that's kind of what you need. So where do we place this one? So I'm just getting started so I don't really have much experience. I've been using this for two months around but now I'll be placing this at Superb. The thing is that I have some experience using project management apps but if I was a beginner then this can be a little bit too complicated. It has some advanced options that you can use and it can be very overwhelming if you're a beginner to be very honest. And also I'm working on a video on ClickUp. But the thing is that when I was showing this app to my editor, he found that really confusing. I was able to explain him about Notion rather more comfortably than ClickUp. I don't know why, but it is what it is. Like literally, you can manage all your tasks, goals and documents in one single app. But since it's a one single app, many things can actually turn out to be more confusing than it should be. So it has a bit of a learning curve that you need to pass in order to get started with this one. And it's also very customizable. So if you're looking for customization options, it has you covered. Since it's not that easy to use, I'll be placing this ad superb. Evernote. So in my video where I ranked the note taking apps, this was actually in the superb segment. But when I consider this with the other productivity apps, I'll be keeping this ad reliable. Some of the reasons are still the same. Like you can only access them on two devices on the free plan. If you want to use it on multiple devices, you'll have to pay for the premium one. Recently, Evernote have brought some new updates to the app to make it more relevant to the current users. As many people over the years have actually completely switched from Evernote and they realize that. I of course will be testing out the new features as well. But considering its current state, I can't really rank this higher. Like sometimes I still have a lot of issues while signing in on my desktop using Evernote. And the phone app I feel is not that great. Just take a look at this glitch for some reason. It is the OG app, but for now, I'll have to keep this at reliable and please consider subscribing to my channel for more such videos just like this one things three so where do we place this one i'll be keeping this one 
and reliable as well things three is very simple and a very clean and minimal to do list app i must say but the barrier to entry on this app is very restricted so firstly it's only there for the apple ecosystem like you can only access them on ipad mac and your iphone of course it's a one-time payment app but the price is kind of high i feel and on top of that you will have to buy separately for each platforms so you'll have to buy the app for the iphone the ipad as well as on the mac i can still consider the mac version to be a separate app but i seriously feel at least with one payment you should get access to both iphone and ipad that's my personal opinion other than that it's a great to-do list app i must say very clean and stuff you can integrate with google calendar as well other than that you can't collaborate with others on this app so that's kind of a downside if you work with a team next up is obsidian so just like my note taking apps video I'll be placing this in the superb category as well. It is a markdown based note taking app and it's really powerful. It also offers a lot of templates and plugins inside this app. If privacy is your concern, you can actually store your notes locally on your device. You don't have to sync it with cloud using this app. And the graph view is incredible over here. Like this is the best app for creating interlinking notes. Like if you need a lot of references and stuff, like it's particularly useful if you're a researcher or something like that and you need to organize them and link notes together. For that purpose, it's the ultimate goal app if you're into research and stuff you can literally organize your notes so nicely over here but just like we talked about in ClickUp, it kind of has a steep learning curve that we have to cross if we want to make the most of this app so it's not really user friendly hence i'll be keeping this app superb as well but if you're a researcher like i previously mentioned this app is insane tick tick so this is one of the most popular to do list app so where do we place this one i'll be placing this one at superb like this one is like an all-in-one to-do list app like it has a habit tracker a pomodoro timer as well as a calendar built in and it also syncs with your google calendar so keep that in mind if you're looking for an all-in-one app then this can be an ideal one for that but i feel it's too much at once and the ui doesn't really complement that if you are in the market looking for a simple to-do list app then i don't think this can play out the way you want it to be but for advanced stuff, definitely yes. It's also cross-platform, so you can like access it everywhere. Apple Notes, so where do we begin? If you have an Apple device and you're looking for a simple note-taking app that will take care of everything, then this is the best app, so. This one straight away goes to the code category. It got the code status in my ranking apps video as well. It's a free app, but it still offers so much. You have rich text options to choose from. It has a seamless sync with iCloud, so you can access it on all Apple devices of yours. But the limitation of this app is definitely gonna be it's not there for Windows and Android, but you are able to take both handwritten as well as text-based notes over here, as well as you can organize them quite nicely using folders and tags. And my God, the tags feature is so useful. I previously created a video on why Apple Notes is a game changer you can check it out by clicking the i button just right now fantastical calendar so where do we place this one so this has been one of the most popular calendar apps if you're an apple user fantastical also understands simple language or natural language as many people call it just like todoist as i previously gave an example but the thing is that the subscription price of fantastical is really high i must say it's really damn high so I'll be placing this one at the specialized segment, which I have renamed to niche for this one. And it also has a very niche audience who won't mind paying that amount for a calendar app. It syncs with Google Calendar as well, so no issues there. But the UI is so damn pretty, I must say. The UI is really nice. But does it justify the high pricing because of that? I don't really know. I'll leave that to you. But for my list, it has to be in the niche segment, I must say. But I do know people who run their lives using Fantastical Calendar and they're like obliged by it, literally. They offer a free trial as well, so you can check it out if you really want a premium calendar app. Microsoft OneNote. Uh, so where do we place this one? This one goes into Reliable as well. Let me explain. Firstly, OneNote is a cross-platform app. You can use it everywhere, just like MS to do. And again, it syncs with the Microsoft Office suite quite nicely. If you often have to use Microsoft Words like Word and Excel and stuff, then this can be an ideal app for that. But I personally find this app really slow and it kind of lags a lot. The Windows version is still nice, but the one I have on my iPhone is really bad, I must say. You can categorize your notes into different folders and stuff, but it's really buggy, I must say. I never got a smooth experience on the iPhone app, on the Android app as well. And I also feel the search feature can be improved like the search feature on every microsoft product kind of lags just take a look at the search feature on windows it's so slow so that is the reason i'll be keeping this at real app next up is notion i personally use this app for project management myself so let's place this at goat but just like a note-taking video i can't keep this at goat status 
it goes to excellent here as well. I totally love this app. It's quite powerful and it's very customizable. And the collaboration features of this app is totally unmatched, I must say. Like the area where I manage all my video ideas and stuff, I have access to that with my editor. So we can monitor the progress of each video that way. And both of us can make changes wherever necessary. But Notion has some performance issue, I must say. Like I really found Notion to be slow at times. Like a simple page often takes up so much time to load up. But my biggest complaint to Notion is that the offline access is very limited. Like we don't really have access to our notes when we don't have an internet connection. So if you travel a lot in flights, then all the best. And specifically, I use Notion on my iPad a lot and my iPad has no SIM card. So I'll have to create a hotspot from my phone just to access Notion on my iPad. And that can be really annoying to be honest. Like the friction to access your notes is really high. So that is the reason I don't use Notion for task management. I prefer using a simple to-do list app, but I do all my project management and manage all my YouTube related stuff here in Notion. So it has to be an excellent app, can be a goated app, but I just mentioned the limitations. And then there was one, Google Calendar. This one has to straight up go to the goated category. So firstly, all the other calendar apps syncs with Google Calendar. So it is the primary thing. The area where Google Calendar kind of lacks is that we don't have a native client app for Windows and Mac. That is the only issue we have over here. We obviously can access them using any web browser, but it's still not the same as having a native app. This issue can be solved. So you can sync Google Calendar with your default Apple Calendar as well as your Windows Calendar. Or you can use some other third party app like Fantastical, for example. Or if you're looking for a free alternative, then check out notion calendar and literally switch to notion calendar for my time blocking process and that's so nice i really love the ui but speaking of google calendar it is definitely the coded app you don't have to pay for anything you get access to everything you want to do over here like it's really easy to get started into the world of time management and stuff on this app you can access them on all devices hence it goes to the goat status and no subscription or any other fee whatsoever so this is what my final list looks like in case you don't agree with my list then please let me know in the comments i'd like to know your experience as well so for now if you want to know how i manage my life using google calendar or notion calendar for that purpose then click here on this video and i'll see you there